Hello everyone, Matt here. Today I have whipped out one of my Seagate 8 terabyte or 8,000 gigabyte archive hard drives to show you. These drives are intended to be a low power archival storage medium. So unlike most three and a half inch hard drives, these run at 5,900 RPM, which is a decent amount slower than your typical 7,200 RPM that you will find on a three and a half inch drive. And that's fine because these are meant to be an archive drive. So that means it is slower, but it's less cost to keep them online for 24 seven available archive storage. Or of course, it doesn't matter if they're being used as offline storage entirely. Once they're filled up, taken offline and kept as archive. Connectivity wise, these are a serial ATA 600 connector. So that's this one. And of course, serial ATA power over here. These are rated for workloads 24 hours a day, seven days a week of up to 180 terabytes per year. I couldn't tell you how much I've actually put through these, but I've had four of them now since sometime in 2015 and not a single one of them has failed. They're still going strong and have not reported any smart errors or any other signs of issues. So I've been really impressed with these drives in that time. They're a really solid drive for data storage. However, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Being archival drives, the mounting points on these are a little bit different. They're designed more to cater for NAS mounting. So as far as mounting these drives goes, it is a little bit different. You might not immediately see it, but on the top and bottom of these, there is something different compared to most desktop three and a half inch drives. You figured it out yet? Yeah. Let's look at this one for comparison. There's one mounting screw hole missing on both sides of the drive and on the underside, they're actually in a different place. So this drive is a standard desktop three and a half inch hard drive. And you can see here, we are missing one mounting screw hole in the middle of the sides of the drive. And then on the bottom, we've got two mounting screw holes on the bottom of this drive here on both sides. So the other two over here and here. However, on this one from Seagate, the archive drive, they're actually wider here and here. You can see here side by side that this mounting screw hole is in the same place on both drives. However, this one here on the Seagate archive drive is actually a decent amount further back. Now, this is perfectly fine for use in NAS scenarios because NAS drive bays have mounting points that are suitable for these drives. However, in desktop scenarios, this won't always work, especially not when you're looking at using the quick mount systems that some computer cases have. These ones don't run up. Often those quick mount systems will use that middle screw hole here and are expecting to have a screw hole down the bottom. So that is just something to be aware of if you're planning on using it in a desktop scenario. You may have some issues with mounting. So you definitely wanna make sure wherever you're planning on using this, that you can mount using the screws in these locations because otherwise you might run into some problems there. So is there a reason these drives run at 5,900 RPM instead of 7,200? Well, they use what is called shingled magnetic recording technology, which is a little bit different from your traditional magnetic platters. In this video, I'm not gonna go into what makes that different, but it contributes to the lower operational cost of these. And at the same time, does require it to run a little bit slower. So you will notice slower performance compared to a typical 7200 RPM, three and a half inch drive. But I've found that it's not that big of a deal for most purposes. I found I can play HD video back off of these, no problem in real time. That has been perfectly fine. At the same time, that's not what these are intended for. They are an archival drive. So they're not meant to be used for real time data access. And so you do need to be aware that read and write will both be slower on these drives. But when it comes to data archive and storage, these really are an excellent option that have proven to be super reliable for me. And I've been very impressed with them. So that's it for me for today. I hope you found this video helpful. For more information and pricing on these drives, make sure you check out the affiliate links down in the description. And of course, give this video the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this from me. Bye for now.